Good morning everybody, my name is Richard Simons and you join me here, I'm just outside of Bournemouth Airport and that there is one of the UK's largest solar farms. Unfortunately not as much of our energy comes from renewable sources as we'd like to see. 100% would be fantastic, wouldn't it? Uh, hopefully we're getting there over the coming years. But what I can do in this video today is take you on a journey where I drive a family electric car. In fact, it's going to be a Cupra Born. And I'm going to compare the running costs of that based on today's energy prices. We're in October 2022. Energy prices have gone up again. So how is this difference between running an electric car and a petrol and diesel car in the modern day? Well, in this video I'll be able to tell you because it's a real world journey, it's a journey I have to do today uh, which is going up to Colchester in Essex so that's best part of a couple hundred miles from here up to London around the N25 and up into Essex so let's see what efficiency we got how much it really costs to run this average electric car and then compare that to the cost of a diesel or petrol equivalent in today's uh, money. I'll also be coming back and then in a different car a Tesla Model 3 so again I can run some comparisons with a couple of different cars and see exactly what the costs pan out to be. Okay, just on the journey now, it's 8.45 in the morning and I've already hit the morning rush hour traffic. So again, real world, sitting in traffic jams and then when I hit the motorway, I'll be doing speed limit speeds. I've got enough miles to cover today, I'm not going to have to hypermile it. I'm going to be driving at speed limits, so very much a real world test. And let's see what we get. Now this car here is a 2022 Cupra Born. This one has the 58 kilowatt hour battery pack. And normally what you do, if you're especially departing for a long journey, is charge the car at home overnight on the previous night. And you can schedule it to just finish right before you finish and heat up and warm your steering wheel and all that kind of stuff. You can do that in quite a lot of electric cars now. Uh, so it's all warm, defrosted and ready to go. This morning isn't too chilly, it's 16 degrees Celsius outside, it's dry, there's not really any wind, so it's reasonable conditions. Now, if you were to charge this car from home, that would cost, at a rate at the moment, the current energy price cap of 34 pence per kilowatt hour. Again, in this, I'm going to assume you don't have your own solar production, and I'm going to assume you don't have one of the cheap overnight tariffs, because you can charge for 7 pence per kilowatt hour, even now with something like an Octopus Go tariff. So let's assume you don't. You're paying the flat electric rate at the current energy price cap now from October of 34 pence per kilowatt hour. That would mean this car would cost you about 19 pounds to fill up okay so that's what it would cost but what would it actually cost for running cost per mile so we're going to look at the efficiency how many miles we can cover for each one of those kilowatt hours of energy we've paid for what i will try and clarify in this as well is usually the media quotes energy prices going up and uh, capped at 2500 for a household. Now that is not a energy cap. Even Liz Truss, the Prime Minister, kind of referred to it in that sense the other day. If you use more energy, you will be charged more. They're just saying two and a half thousand pounds is based on the average energy cost per year for uh, your average three bedroom house. So actually, if you have a larger house or you run many electric cars in your house, then you will be paying more. It's pence per kilowatt hour. And I wish the focus in the media was on that. Uh, that's We use a price per unit like we do with petrol and diesel and most things, but in the media, it's not quite quoted as such. Anyway, it transpires we pay about 34.2 pence per kilowatt hour under the current price cap. And that's for the next two years, allegedly. It is different for business, and that's a point of much contention because business has so far been uncapped, can be extremely expensive. However, we are seeing some cappings coming in on that. I'm waiting to hear exactly what that is per kilowatt hour. I don't have that information quite to hand. But anyway, let's get on with the journey. And then, like I say, it's very much real world because I'm currently sat in a crawling traffic jam just next to Bournemouth Airport, barely started the trip. So uh, this is very much real world. Let's see what we get with a combined average of some traffic jam and then plenty of motorway driving at our speed limit of 17 miles per hour. Now, speed does make a big difference to efficiency. I could go at 65 miles per hour and make it much more efficient. But now I'm going to travel at the speed limit and uh, keep this as a real world scenario. So let's see what we get from this trip and hopefully we can clear this traffic jam soon. I think the driving around town electric cars are perfect, not just because I'm not emitting pollution outside the school here, but they're smooth and easy to drive. And now we're just about to pull onto the dual carriageway and you just got an easy effortless power as well. So smooth. This Cooper really is a really nice car, great package for a fairly small external size. It's got loads of room inside, 
really nicely trimmed, all the toys and gadgets, plenty of performance. I love it, I think it's great. Okay, right, so after three and a half hours of driving, mixed conditions, town, traffic, country, and motorway, this car's averaged four miles per kilowatt hour. Now, that would equate to 8.5 pence per mile in running costs from fuel, from the cost of electric. And remember, that's the maximum domestic electric rate at the moment. I'm not taking cheap overnight tariffs, 8.5 pence per mile. Now, I've just done a few calculations based on the average cost of petrol and diesel in the UK. If I had a petrol car to equal that cost per mile, I'd need to achieve something like 87, 88 miles per gallon. Now, there's not many petrol cars that would do that. And if it was a diesel car, well, diesel is more expensive than petrol, uh, you would have, and by a biggest margin ever, apparently, but you would need to average about 96 to 97 miles per gallon to get the same running cost. So you can see there, the electric car charged from home, even at the highest rates, is still a lot cheaper to run. Because, again, I don't know a diesel car that can do that kind of efficiency. However, if you are traveling more than a couple of hundred miles in a day, the range of electric cars varies between 150 and 400 miles of real world range, but they're seeding more than whatever the range is of your car in a day, you're gonna to need to stop at a fast charger to top up and head on home. And they are more expensive. So how would that compare? Well, I've just stopped at what I think is the future of the forecourt, the future of our filling stations. This is the GridServe electric forecourt here in Braintree. And I'm going to plug in and find out. Now, just looking at the cost of the electricity there, it looks like it's going to be 66 pence per kilowatt hour. So nearly double. Let's say on average, the cost of rapid charging now is between 65, 70 pence. So pretty much double the cost of at home. And so therefore, it doesn't take too much calculation to work out that this is then going to cost me uh, more like about 17 pence per mile. So what would that work out for petrol and diesel? Well, let me do some numbers in a second. I'll plug it in, do the numbers. I need a wee, <laughs> and I'll work it out and tell you. So here I am charging at 125 kilowatts, and that means I'm adding um, just over eight miles per minute, actually. So um, if I'm here for 10 minutes, I'm gonna add over 80 miles of charge. Uh, which is about what I'm going to do. I still need to go to the toilet quickly. However, I'm just working out some figures. So based on, let's say, 66 pence per kilowatt hour, uh, what would a petrol or diesel car need to do to equal the running cost now? I'm at 17 pence per mile. Well, a petrol car, from my quick calculations here, I'll put a corrections below if I've got it wrong. A petrol car would need to do about 43 miles per gallon to have the same running cost. And a diesel car would need to do about 48 miles per gallon to have the same running cost. So... I think you'll agree that even at the expensive public charging places, which you're only going to ever use if you're doing more than the range of your car in a day, because normally you just drive home and charge up there, you are still equaling about the same as efficient versions of combustion vehicles. But most of the time, of course, we're on the cheaper rates from charging at home. If you don't have home charging and reliant on public fast charging, then you are going to be on a fairly similar price parity. But from what I would gather so far here today, I would not give claim to the title that electric cars are more expensive to run than combustion vehicles. You have to add into the factor here that uh, electric cars do most of the time charge on cheaper tariffs and do have less maintenance and servicing. There's no clutch, there's no oil changes, there's no, you know, there just isn't much to do with servicing. I mean, Tesla don't really have a service schedule. You might do brake fluid every couple of years, the odd wiper blade and the odd tire. And by the way, tires do not wear out more quickly in electric cars. That was another media myth spread around a little while ago. Um, so I hope that gives sample to that. The key point now that the public rapid chargers are a little bit more expensive, of course, is that don't use them for any more than you need to. You know, it's as simple as that. If you've got enough range to cover 60 miles, but home is 50 miles away, then just go home and charge there. So now I've switched into something a little more sporty. This is a Tesla Model 3 Performance. So if you like your fast cars, and they don't come much faster than the Model 3 Performance. I mean, crikey, the sheer power in this thing is unbelievable. What does this cost to run? Well, I've got my journey back there, 178 miles back to the office. 
got 95% state of charge in this car, which is, again, easily back in one go. And so we'll see what efficiency we get from this. And again, without trying too hard. Interestingly, the owner I've just got this car from, in its 13,500 miles, let me just double check the mileage, yeah, 13,400 miles, he has never used a supercharger or rapid charger. He's only ever charged his car from home. He just doesn't do journeys long enough. Even when he travels a moderate distance, it goes there and back again, purely on what he's charged at home. So it goes to show, with many an average owner, you can rarely even need to use superchargers or fast chargers that are public and more expensive like we saw earlier. Anyway, I'm going to head down towards the M25 now and uh, battle the traffic there. So we'll see what efficiency we get from this. And remember, this isn't the most efficient version of a Tesla. This is a performance model. 0 to 60 in just over three seconds. If you're going to buy an equivalent version to this, what would you pick? I don't know, BMW M3 or something like that. If you like your cars, I like my cars. But electric cars are just punchier, quicker and cheaper to run. So uh, let's see what we get from this. I'm in a traffic jam already for some temporary roadworks. There we go. Not a good start to get back of it. It's now four o'clock in the afternoon and I've got a slight change to my plan. So I'm going to wrap up the video now. It's also getting a bit dark. And so what did we get with the Model 3 Performance, a high powered electric car? Does it cost more to run the petrol diesel? I'm going to give you some numbers now and then wrap everything up. So uh, in summary, on that last section of journey, I did 145 miles. I was not hanging around. I was in the outside lane, strictly the speed limit officer. And I averaged 271 watt hours per mile as uh, Tesla Talk, which works out to about 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour. So a little bit less efficient than I got from the Cooper earlier. This is a very fast car. Uh, and that equates to 9.2 pence per mile if you're paying the full domestic electric tariff rate. So that, if you were to have a petrol car based on the current average petrol prices in the UK, you'd need to have a petrol car that does 80 miles per gallon. So if you can find me a petrol car that does 0-60 in 3 seconds and does 80 miles per gallon, let me know about it in the comments below. I'll be very keen to see it. Uh, so you can quite clearly see there that if I was only running my Tesla here, for example, on public charging, which isn't the case. Most of us charge at home early, hence those calculations. Let's say I was there and I'm paying double the electric. You can see I need a 40 miles per gallon car to be equivalent to it. So, okay, that's closer. But in all these headlines we keep hearing on the media, electric cars now cost more than petrol diesel. Hopefully you can see from this test and demonstration, they do not. You'd have to have a very thirsty electric car and basically only charge from public chargers. Uh, most people will charge from home, have a full tank of fuel every morning. Ideally, you've got solar panels on the roof and battery storage and all that stuff. I'm looking at a warehouse there, that should have solar panels and so should that one and that should have battery storage and uh, all that kind of stuff. So should my warehouse, but that's coming soon. There's another video on that. Uh, so there we go. Um, hopefully you can see the electric cars are still cheaper to run. Plus you've got the maintenance. Plus they're just nicer to drive and they're fast and all that kind of stuff as well. Depends what floats your boat, but there's very little argument against them. If we can make green energy, we've then got zero emission cars as well. Ideally, obviously car production uh, uses energy. <laughs> yep, yeah, we can carry on with more different arguments. Uh, ideally, we would all just walk, wouldn't we, or ride horses. So. Anyway, hopefully you get the point. Uh, electric cars are still cheaper to run than a petrol or diesel. So hopefully that's been useful to you. Hopefully that's my argument come across in this scenario with some demonstrations to prove it. And uh, yeah, hopefully you've just taken it on board and it's been a good demonstration. So if you like that, hit like on the video. Uh, do comment below. I'd be interested to read your comments and stay subscribed for another video hopefully coming very soon. So catch you on the next one. Hey everyone, thanks for watching our videos. If you like our content and want to see more, don't forget to not only subscribe, but also hit the bell icon for notifications so you don't miss any new videos as they're uploaded. Plus, we're also on Instagram. Just look up R Simons or RSEV. Us, we're on Facebook and Twitter. So lots of news, stories and things as we go on each one of those channels.